Good morning, Average Engineers. Today I wanted to do another little talk about an article I wrote by the title of Transitioning to Senior Engineer, the Skills and Habits that You Need to Get There. This is an interesting topic typically because this is probably, I think, one of the harder transitions or probably the one that most people want to make and a lot of people don't and they get frustrated about, I imagine, that transition from just engineer to senior engineer. Sometimes it seems sort of arbitrary. Sometimes people move there quickly. Sometimes other people struggle to get there. I struggled to get there a little bit and actually had to jump jobs to get that title. But pretty much anyone who's been writing code for a couple years, that's probably the first thing that comes to their mind is how can I get a senior engineering title. What I unpacked in this article was what can you do to get there to the senior engineer? How can you stand out from your peers? What technical skills are required? What soft skills do you need? That's kind of what I'm going to talk about today, kind of all those things together, how the path looks to get from engineer to senior engineer. And although this can differ depending on where you work, I would say generally what I'm going to share is probably the things that I see that most people don't do or the things that are lacking in engineers that want to get to the senior level. They don't do these things well. I get asked a lot how to move to senior engineer and it seems like people want a shortcut. They want to go from junior and mid-level engineer to senior engineer and there's like a normal path of putting in a bunch of years of experience and eventually getting there the question is is there things you can do to like short circuit that and I think there probably are a few now that I look back on it I didn't necessarily short circuit I just put in the time and got the title by working hard but there are things I think now that I look back that I could have done and focused on that probably would have shortened that path for me I think it's important to state starting out that if you want to get to into senior engineer you probably need to start performing at that senior engineer level before you're actually going to get recognized or get promoted i would say that's generally true sometimes you'll be in a place where they promote you and they want you to work into that role maybe if you're in the job and they have vacancies there and they want you to move up and they'll put you there and hope that you eventually fill that role which i don't think is that bad of idea but I think that if you're looking to grow to senior engineer quickly, you're going to have to do certain things when you're not a senior engineer to get that recognition and get promoted. This list is not exhaustive, but here's looking back on my journey, what I think people should focus on if you're a junior or mid-level engineer looking to go to that senior level. I think you have to write more code. I think you have to learn consistently. You need to stay uncomfortable. You need to work on your communication skills and your written skills. You need to share your knowledge and be able to mentor other people. You need to be a team player. You need to be working on a team in a good manner. You need to be a team player. You need to go to the extra mile and all, all the stuff you're working on, your projects at work. You need to work on project planning and implementation in the software context. I picked out these because they're really attainable for people to do and they're typically the things that people struggle with most starting out, especially junior mid-level engineers. I think that working on each one of these things will definitely move you to the senior level. These are things that separate a senior engineer from someone who's not a senior engineer. I do want to mention that hard work is a big part of this, and I know it's not popular today, but honestly, if you want to move to senior engineer quicker than those around you and you want to beat out other people around you to get that title, that same position, you simply need to work harder. And what does that mean? I mean, work smarter, not harder. Don't just work 12 hours a day. That's kind of stupid. Get a new job if you have to do that. By working harder, when it relates to these other things I talked about, you need to work for yourself, not only work well for your employer, but you need to take some time to work harder for yourself, work on yourself. A lot of the things I'm talking about, it's going to go a lot quicker if you put the time into yourself to learn these skills outside of working hours. If you're just working mindlessly for your employer for 10, 12 hours a day. You're not going to have any time to grow yourself. So work harder on yourself to grow these skills. The first two things on my list I mentioned were learning more and coding more. I think that it seems sort of obvious, but to write more code generally at work and outside of work and to learn more means you're going to move up the ladder faster. If you're simply going to work for eight hours and just banging out the same old thing, you're not really growing, you're not learning new languages, learning different ways of doing things, you're not spending time reading materials, blogs, and just growing in your knowledge as a software engineer, 
it's going to be harder for you to get to that senior level. So write more code both at work and out of work because it's going to make you a better software engineer. Surprise, surprise. But also learn more, read more things, study, follow the industry, be on LinkedIn, see what's happening in the industry, learn about new technologies, play around with them, get involved in open source, just learn to grow your skills. Some stuff that I've read throughout the past that I would say every junior mid-level engineer, especially data engineers, need to learn or read about is the Data Warehouse Toolkit. It's a great book on data warehousing and data modeling. The Pragmatic Programmer is an awesome book just generally about software development and you know, a good way to approach it. Staff Engineer by Will Larson. I know we're talking about going to Senior Engineer, but just having that greater mindset and project planning, things like that, it'll help with that sort of learning. The Staff Engineer's Path by Tanya Riley. It's another great book. Again, that's just getting you out of the muck and getting you to see the bigger picture for sure. And then some great Substack newsletters I read are the Pragmatic Engineer newsletter by Gregory and then the High Growth newsletter by Jordan Cutler, both great software related newsletters that if you read those on a consistent basis you will become a better engineer and this is going to require you to be a little bit more uncomfortable possibly it's going to require you taking some time out of your night or your weekend to actually take a few hour to here and there to work on some side projects code a little bit more learn a new language learn rust learn golang read a few more blogs and books it's not rocket science but it does take extra hard work on your part the other part is like human dynamics. I kind of alluded to that earlier. This is the part that most people struggle with and it's hard for mid-level and just engineers that are looking to go to the senior level. They really struggle with this. These communication skills, the written communication skills and verbal both. They also don't see themselves as people who can mentor and train others and upskill other people and teach other people. They have a hard time being a team player a lot of times. They just haven't had a lot of experience or they think that they need to be the smartest person in the room, which really is detrimental to working on a team and being seen as someone who leads. Honestly, this is probably one of the hardest skills to work on because it requires some humility. It requires you to think differently and a lot of times engineers just want to focus on code and that's fine because I talked about you need to be a better coder, but transitioning to that senior level really means you step out of like coding full time. And it probably means some of your time is spent helping other people, working on teams, helping someone else solve problems, listening to other people's points of views, maybe solving conflicts or writing better documentation, just, you know, things like that, better verbal and written communication and stand-ups in team meetings and project planning. You just need to be able to get out of that mindset of solution and code and my way is the right way and listen to other people and learn to plan and talk more and just verbalize your thoughts to other people and take their input. And this is honestly probably one of the biggest struggles I've seen with the junior engineers and the mid-level engineers is just simply that learning to work with other people, learning not to get angry about things when somebody makes a comment on a PR or in a meeting about a certain way of doing things or your code or some something you're closely tied to, some technology. Senior engineers are really able to work with people, be team players, they're able to mentor and coach other people. And while this is a really hard skill to learn, it's totally doable. It's just a really a mindset change that you have to practice. I would say the next big thing I see mid-level and junior engineers struggle with is just project planning and implementation in general. The, just the general feeling is that they always want to jump into the solution. They always want to write code. It's all about the code to them, which is good in the beginning. But to get to the senior engineering level, you got to take a step back. You need to learn to think before you code. You need to design things before you code. You need to make rough plans on paper, draw pictures. You need to be able to estimate complexity and the time it takes to do this project, maybe even some costing. Again, it's really about stepping back from just being all about the code and having these other skills like thinking before doing. Senior engineers know that for every hour they put into planning and project planning on a project, it will save them probably five hours on the back end of wasted effort and coding. And this, again, is a really easy skill to practice. You really just have to get out of that mindset of, oh, I need to write code immediately to actually thinking at a higher level, thinking about other things, thinking about how this project's gonna go, all the steps required to work on this project, the time required for those things. It's really about stepping back and seeing the big picture, which again, 
is more of a senior engineer thing. A lot of mid-level and junior engineers either just don't do this or struggle to do it, or yeah, they just simply don't do it at all. Again, if you're just a junior mid-level engineer and you're looking to get to that next senior level engineer, I would say it's probably you know 40% getting better at writing code because you need to be technical. You need to be able to write good code and come up with good solutions. Of course you do. But then the other 60% is actually not coding. These are other skills that make you extremely valuable to the business. Working on a team, being a team player, being able to mentor and work with other engineers, being able to do project plans at a big high level, not just have your mind focused on the code, be able to have the big picture in mind, be able to communicate with people well, both verbally and in written, and just that desire to learn and grow. You're known as someone who picks up new languages, someone who's kind of up to date on what's going on in the industry. You play with stuff on the side. You really have to put in the extra work. And I think then you'll be recognized. People will see that as a whole. Wow, this person's really a good coder. Or they're like coding a lot. They're learning and growing a lot. They're learning consistently. They're also a good team player. They're easy to work with. They can solve problems and hey, this person is actually decent at planning the big picture. They don't just focus on their one little piece. I think about the big picture, they're able to plan kind of things out a couple weeks out, the work's going on. Skills like that are gonna get recognized because most people don't do those things. Most people, most engineers that you run into in the beginning, all they care about is the code. They just wanna be the smartest person. They wanna write this, the code. They're just super laser focused on this little thing in front of them. They have blinders on. So if you're able to step back and grow yourself personally and professionally and open your mind and look at the bigger picture and work on those things, you will definitely get to senior engineer a lot quicker than most people.